All right, that's pretty much it there. We should not need to come back to the command line for the rest of this. We should be able to control everything from uh, Webmin, except there is one more thing that we need to do. I just now caught myself. Let's SSH back into server 9. Well, whichever your CentOS server is. Okay. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and become root sudo dash su dash and type in the user's password. What we need to do is um, two things that we need to do. We need to start up system dash config dash security level dash TUI hit enter and what we need to do is for SE Linux we're going to change this from enforcing to permissive and uh, SE Linux is a useful security tool but for most implementations it's really just kind of in the way but instead of totally disabling it we're going to put it in permissive mode and hit on customize because we need to open up some ports on our firewall. And we're going to open up both the www port, the HTTP port, and the HTTPS port. And we're going to tab over to OK. And whoopsie. We'll tab over, well, I did it again. Tab over to OK. Click OK. Alrighty. Now, I'm just going to make sure that SE Linux is in permissive mode. So I'm going to type in SE status. And there we see the current mode is permissive, and the mode from the config, fi config file is permissive. So SE Linux will be out of our way. Now, we're ready to deal with Webman. So we'll connect to our server through Webman. Server 9. Dot See, I typed in HTTP instead of HTTPS. Okay, and there's that Internet Explorer warning about the site security certificate, but I created the certificate, so we're okay. I'm going to log in to Webmin. All right, now we go into servers here you notice the new software we installed there's no way to to control that here through webmin just yet so what we'll need to do is hit refresh modules under webmin and it may take a while for it to uh, refresh the modules it goes through and checks to see if any software has been installed that uh, any unused modules can now be used for So now we look under servers and we have Apache server and MySQL ser database server that we can configure from Webmin. I'm going to click on Apache web server first. So we need to set up our virtual host. So let's create virtual host, um, handle connections to address, any address is fine. But all we're going to do is we're going to hit uh, document root here click on the dot 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 button and we're looking for slash SRV double click on that and then vhosts server9.l2cs.net and then htdocs and then once that in we've got that we click on OK and the server name we want not it's not going to be automatic we need a unique server name and this is going to be the actual URL that uh, for our virtual host in my case it's server 9.altusius.net okay and I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, wait add virtual server file I'm going to hit the selected file this will store the virtual host information in this file. 
and this is where we go to the directory that we created slash Etsy oops um, and then HTTP D then the hosts dot D I'm gonna click OK and for the name of the file at the end of vhost.d I'll put in slash and then server 9.althusius.net.conf remember it's got to end in .conf it doesn't have to be called your web address but I call it my web address so when I look at it before I even open the file I know exactly which vir virtual host file this is and it's got to end with .conf for our directive to work that we put in there, the httpd.comp file. Now we'll create now. Okay. Now we need to start Apache. Okay. And that's it for Apache. Now we need to configure our MySQL database server. The first thing we need to do is start the database server. We can't do anything with it until it's started. So click on Start MySQL Server. Okay, let's create a new database. I'm going to call this database Server, no server 9. Since that's the name of my vhost, and click on create. The defaults are fine. And now I need to create a new user. And we'll click on user permissions, create user. Uh, not going to give them any permissions. I'm just going to click it off of anonymous user. Then I'm going to call this DB user and password h1l1t3 and then the host I'm going to specify just from local host only and no rights and just click on create okay now we need to um, return to database list and then we'll click on database permissions and create new database permissions and the databases we're going to our new database is now in the drop down we can click server 9 username will be db user the new user we created and from host we'll click on local host and then we'll select all the permissions here and click on create. Okay. Now we should be ready uh, to work with 